Hey guys, it's Bishop Shuzzy here and welcome to another Manchester United episode. This is of course the mid-season review, so I think um, I want to try and keep this episode fairly short, so we'll get into it before I show you, we'll get into the fixtures before I show you the league table anyway. Obviously the first game of the season was Norwich, we beat them, or we drew with them, sorry, 2 all. Away from home, not the best start to the season, but, you know, I guess you can't always expect to come out, you know, from pre-season firing on all cylinders. So as you can see, Juan Mata getting man of the match with his assists, with Yamalenko scoring a penalty and Nani on the score sheet as well. We then beat Swansea 5-2 at home. Fairly straightforward. I mean, we scored a lot of goals and also conceded some, which was disappointing, but, you know, Sommer played an 8 match rating, which is very good, especially considering it was only his second game, um, well, official game for the club anyway. Yamalenko scored 2 we got a Chico own goal, and Kagawa got two as well for himself. We then played Arsenal, beat them 1-0, which is very important, you know, at the start of the season. And as you can see, even Robin Van Persie um, getting the only goal there. Valencia with the man of the match performance at right back. We then, you know, back-to-back -back wins over, you know, fairly decent sides that could potentially fight us for the title. We beat Chelsea 6-4 in a 10-goal thriller. As you can see, Aspilicoita and Fellaini both got sent off, but Marta got a brace, Bertrand own goal, Kigawa, Van Persie, and obviously I finalised that deal for Kovacic, but um, Costa got a brace as well for Chelsea, Hazard and Willian, so all three of their, you know, strong um, attacking um, wingers and midfielders managed to score for them. Our group consisted of Monaco, Galatasaray and Juventus for the Champions League, and we drew two all in the first game of Monaco, which is of course my other series I do for Football Manager. Nani and Marta again on the score sheet, and uh, Rodriguez and Germain for Monaco. We then beat Everton 1-0 away back in the Premier League. Kigawa in the 88th minute um, with Butner picking at men of the match. We then beat Sheffield United 3-0 in the Capital One Cup third round. Hernandez in the fifth, Yamalenko and Yanezai played a bit of a second string team there. We then beat Reading, 5-1 back in the Premier League. Then Percy Brace, Kigawa, Kovacic and Juan Mata. We then played Galatasaray in the second group stage game. Beat them 6-1, which is, you know, a pretty interesting result considering I would, you know, I would rate Galatasaray fairly high anyway. Kovacic, Butner, Phil Jones, Hernandez, Nani and Johnny Evans on the score sheet. We then follow this up with a 3-0 victory over Cardiff. And then as you can see, Yanezai, Carrick and Van Persie, all goals coming in the first half. Southampton were up next and beat them 10 0 away from home at St. Mary's. Pretty pretty good result, I have to say. They were flying pretty high at this time. Um, but I guess we caught them on an off day, I guess. Uh, Juan Mata and Van Persie getting our goals with Mata getting man of the match performance once again. Juventus was up next and we can only manage a two-all draw in Turin. So Van Persie and Kigawa are our goal scorers. As you can see, Juan Mata picking up another man of the match performance. We then stumbled in the league, a one-all draw with Blackburn. Um, despite a bit, oh, their goal did come in the 92nd minute, but um, youth player Sadie Jenko playing it right back managed to get our only goal in that game. We then faced Everton in the Capital One Cup fourth round, beat them 1-0. At Goodison, Juan Mata again, man of the match, and getting the only goal there. Newcastle was up next, we beat them 3-2 at home. Ben Arthur and Ashley Young, former my former player. And Johnny Evans got a brace with Juan Mata getting another goal. St Evans actually stealing Mata's um, usual man of the match um, title that he gets. We then beat Juve 4-1 at home, which was pretty pretty necessary actually. Nanny Evans and a Yamalenko brace for us there. And um, that put us, you know, fairly comfortably at the top of the um, Champions League group anyway. We beat Stoke 5 0 at home back in the Premier League. Goals coming from Yamalenko, brace from Evans again, Michael Keane and Shinji Kagawa. We then drew one all with Tottenham away. Pretty disappointing. Tottenham weren't that that good I should say. Um, Nani getting our goal and the opening goal, and Javier Pastore getting one for Tottenham. We then beat Monaco 2-1 at home. Again, this basically just, you know, wrapped the Champions League group up for us, and um, I think we had qualified after this win, so Johnny Evans 
and Javier Hernandez with uh, Schneiderlin getting one for Monaco there. We then beat Fulham 3-0 in the Premier League. Fairly straightforward again against, you know, a fairly weak team in Fulham. Nanny Jones and Van Persie with Nanny picking up man of the match performance. And uh, he, he, up until this point, he's been fairly prolific, Nanny, which is good because he was a bit of a flop last season. We did lose the um, Manchester derby, however, to City. Um, it was away, but Sergio Aguero getting the goal after Gael Clichy got sent off um, in a game w that I'm pretty sure we yeah, we actually got dominated. So that was really disappointing, but they were the home team, and we did dominate possession. Um, so yeah, their defenders played very well, as you can see. Liverpool was up next, and it was good to bounce back. A 3-1 home victory over our, you know, one of our most fierce rivals. Yamalenko, Nani, and a penalty for Hernandez. And Suarez got one in the 91st minute. We then drew one all with a fairly, you know, second string team against Galatasaray. Um, Juan Mata getting the man of the match again and scoring our only goal there. Um, he played a few subs like Higawa started, um, Ever started, Smalling started. Um, and then I brought a few players off the bench like Anderson and Keane. So it was fairly decent. Good little run out and we, didn't, we actually managed to avoid defeat. Um, the next game was Crystal Palace. We lost to them 2-1 away. They were also coming last. It's, it's that, you know, typical game where the team that's coming last manages to beat you. So we've got Charlie Austin and Jason Punchion um, for Palace and Juan Mata for us. Back-to-back -back, um, losses was against Tottenham in the Capital One Cup quarterfinal. Um, as you can see, they open scoring through Danny Rose. Um, Butner got sent off and Soldado slotted away the penalty. Um, and Yamalenko had one as well. We then bounced back, beat Aston Villa 5-3 at Villa Park. As you can see, Hernandez, Jones, a brace for Marta, Welbeck, and uh, Marta missed his penalty um, before getting on the rebound. Uh, we then beat Leeds 5-0 at home. Again, another little nice victory um, over a, you know, a fairly decent rival, despite Leeds not being as strong as they once were in the past. Van Percy with a brace, Evans, and Danny Welbeck with two for himself as well. And um, Welbeck's really stepped up as well this season, which is really good. West Ham up next. 2-0 wave, 2-0 uh, home victory, I should say. Johnny Evans and Javier Hernandez there, with Evans picking up man of the match. We then beat Liverpool 4-1 in the FA Cup third round. Welbeck, Van Percy with a penalty. Uh, Welbeck actually got two there. And Jamalenko in the 92nd minute. Um, he also set up a few goals in pretty sure. Norwich up next, another 4-0 home victory. We had a lot of home games in this um, stretch of fixtures. Danny Welbeck, Hattrick, and Chris Smalling. Um, Tete got sent off. Um, we then beat Arsenal 3-1 at home, which is always a good thing. Um, well, not really for me, because I am actually an Arsenal fan. But anyway, then Percy penalty in the fifth minute. Kashani and goal. Javier Hernandez picking up a very late goal. And uh, Phil Jones also gets sent off. So it was a... Fairly exciting game. Swansea was up next, away from home. 4-1 away victory. As you can see, Van Persie again opened the scoring. Warbeck with a brace, Javier Hernandez. John Joe Shelby getting a very late goal, but obviously when you're four behind, it doesn't really matter. Um, Sheffield United was up next in the fourth round of the FA Cup. Um, versing them, well, actually knocking them out both times in both cups this season. Javier Hernandez and Antonio Valencia. Um... Chelsea's up next. We lost 3-1 to them, which is really disappointing um, because we had a fairly decent gap in the league above them, so to lose was pretty disappointing. William opened the scoring. We got one back through Van Persie, um, through a Van Persie penalty. He then got sent off um, just after Frank Lampard scored, and William got his brace a little bit later, and we followed that up with a 1-0 away loss to Reading, who are fairly, you know, fairly crap in the league or doing fairly poorly, I should say. Robson Kanu getting their only goal there. And it was a pretty disappointing way to end, you know, a fairly nice run of fixtures, I guess. We had one, what was that, like, yeah, about seven or eight games in a row. Yeah, it's about, it's eight games, yeah. Anyway, um, I'll show you the league table now. Um, I'd like to see what the preview. I don't want to see the preview. Um, how do I do it? Uh, no? What am I doing? What am I doing? Stages. 
Uh, sometimes I'm useless. Anyway, as you can see, we are coming first currently. Um, we have, obviously have Man City and Chelsea behind us who, you know, have beaten us recently to obviously um, close the gap quite a bit. We did have a seven-point lead on Chelsea at one stage, um, which was very good, but obviously the couple of losses we've had have obviously kicked things back a bit. And we only have a three-point lead over both of those two teams now with um, Arsenal trailing eight points behind um, us, which is fairly good because Arsenal are kind of out of the race now. It's a, kind of a three-horse race between ourselves, Chelsea, and Manchester City. Um, if I go into the transfers, don't think I've made much activity. Um, I think I brought in a couple of used players, which are, you know, fairly... Um, well, they're not really important, I guess. Um, I did bring in one player, however, for a lot of money, but he is obviously a youth player as well. Anyway, Travis Roberts was brought in for 950k. Um, he's a Welsh attacking midfielder that can play out in the wing which is, you know, it's needed. Um, I do want some midfield prospects. Um, and he's, yeah, he's fairly good um, as the advanced playmaker. As you can see, got the pass and got the uh, creativity and the flair, um, which will all improve as well with time. So, rated four-star potential. We then got Carl Gotts from Salzburg. Fairly decent striker, 17 years old, Austrian. Um, if I play him as a poacher, as you can see, his pace is not extremely good, but at 17 it will improve. He's got a very good dribbling, finishing at first touch, off the ball as well is pretty good. So yeah, one for the future as well. Um, and finally, Michelle Miranda was brought in for 22 million, 10 mil up front, 12 mil over 24 months from Bologna. 16-year-old, um, I bought him when he was 15, but he's just turned 16 recently. Um, and as you can see, he is an attacking midfield centre, rated 5 star potential. Um, I'll probably play him as an advanced playmaker. Um, I was thinking about retraining him as a striker to play him as either a Troquista or a um, false nine. Perhaps. Um, not sure. Probably play him as AMC. Um, but I'm not exactly liking that creativity. It's a bit low. But um, I do assume that will improve over time. But as you can see, he's a very, very good player. And um, should absolutely tear teams up in a couple of seasons' time. I will be um, embedding him into the first team straight away. Um, any players we let go of? We let go of a few players on a free transfer. You know, Petruki, um, Ben Peason. Uh, we got Benoit Costil. He actually left the club, constantly complaining about first team um, opportunities. So we lost our backup goalkeeper, but um, I have made a couple of uh, Bosman signings for next season. So he left for 1.5 mil to Lorient. So not a bad piece of business there. Got him on a free, sold him for 1.5 mil, I guess. You know, didn't really make an appearance either. Um, so as you can see, these are the transfers I've set up. Um, we've got Kanabik, who is a centre-half, fairly decent. Um, wanted back up, because I'll show you in a second my new formation I'm, I've been playing recently. Um, we've got Dennis Prey, um, the Belgian, you know, midfielder. Probably be com good competition for uh, Carrick and Kovacic. And he's only 20, so that's a very good signing. And Ter Stegen, so backup goalkeeper, first team goalkeeper, 22 years old, very good. Got him on a free on like 60k wages, which is pretty good for a player of his quality. Um, and it, I think it was a five year deal as well, five or four year deal, so that's good. Um, anyway, I'll show you the tactics now and how I've changed it. Um, I've gone with a three at the back, a very attacking formation, uh, as you can see, attacking balanced. Um, you got two, two deep line playmakers. I got rid of a ball winning midfielder. Works well. Changed the um, advanced playmaker to a supporting role. Still got our wingers. Um, we've got a Troquista and a Poacher up front, which I, I complements each other well. The Troquista usually assists the um, Poacher. We've got three at the back, three centre halves um, with the stopper role. Yep. And uh, the middle one being just a defensive role. So yeah. Um, and my defenders have been playing really well recently. But um, we are a bit short at the back. We have, you know, we've got our full backs and stuff. But we only have one other centre-half, which is Michael Keane, who's been playing well, I guess, when caught upon. He can also play in midfield, but obviously don't really need him there. Um, Durant Page was a youth player from the academy that I brought up. Give him a bit of game time and he's improving very, like, very well. He's also Welsh, so that's good. And hopefully he'll become a, you know, a first-team player in the future. Um, 
Yeah. He's been coming. He played the um, FA Cup game recently against Sheffield United. So that was good. He played a 6.9, I think. So it was, you know, fairly good for a player of his age um, and ability. He doesn't really suit the deep lane playmaker role at the moment. Um, he's more, yeah, as you can see, he's more of a ball winning midfielder um, and a bit lacking in the creative, creativity department, I should say. So that's good. Four star potential as well. Um, and I will try and implement um, the new youth players I have, um, hopefully in the um, future FA Cup games as well. Um, hopefully we can wrap up the league and get my first league victory on Football Manager this year as well. Um, anyway, this episode's really dragged on now. Um, so yeah, that's an interesting formation. I've never really used three at the back. And yeah, um, basically out of transfer budget this season um, with that 22 mil I spent. And obviously, you know, um, agent fees for these three players as well. So yeah, that will basically wrap up this episode. Um, I guess I will play the FA Cup. If I make the final, I will obviously live com that in a future episode, um, as well as the final of the Champions League, if I do manage to make that as well. I'm um, not too optimistic about that, but I am pretty quietly confident that we'll get through this Fiorentina first knockout round legs. Um, so yeah, I'm joining you guys back hopefully with a live com. If not, it will be the end of season review after the Aston Villa game. So yeah, guys, if you've enjoyed the episode, please give the video a like. Head over to my channel and subscribe as well. And um, yeah, that'll keep you up to date with all these future episodes. Goodbye, guys.